Okay, so this time they're not just talking about banning TikTok. They're actually taking steps to ban TikTok. So now it's becoming more of a reality. So let's take a conversation, have a conversation about it, and look at both sides of the issue. Why are they talking about banning it? And why are people against the banning? Okay, so a bill that's passed the House that's actually want to ban TikTok. They say within six months, ByteDance, the parent company of TikTok, would have to sell TikTok USA to a company that's actually in the USA. So why do they want to ban TikTok? I'm going to play one reason for the ban and one reason opposing the ban. Then we'll talk about it. To the gentleman from Wisconsin, Mr. Gallagher. Thank you. Uh, TikTok is a threat to our national security because it is owned by ByteDance, which does the bidding of the Chinese Communist Party. We know this because ByteDance leadership says so and because Chinese law requires it. This bill therefore forces TikTok to break up with the Chinese Communist Party. It does not apply to American companies. It only applies to companies subject to the control of foreign adversaries defined by Congress. It says nothing about election interference and cannot be turned against any American social media platform. It does not impact websites in general. The only impacted sites are those associated with foreign adversary apps, such as TikTok.com. It can never be used to penalize individuals. The text explicitly prohibits that. And it cannot, cannot be used to censor speech. It takes no position at all on the content of speech, only foreign adversary control. Foreign adversary control of what is becoming the dominant news platform for Americans under 30. This is a common sense measure to protect our national security. I urge my colleagues to support this critical bipartisan legislation. The gentleman. And now, an opposing view against the ban. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I have enormous respect for the efforts of my colleagues to focus on security and data protection, and I share many of their concerns. But I disagree with this approach and bill that could impact 170 million Americans who use TikTok. One third of all U.S. adults use the app and millions of entrepreneurs and small business owners use the platform to support their family. And yes, just like every other social media platform, there is misinformation and privacy concerns on TikTok and I share those. However, it's important that we don't treat TikTok differently than other platforms. If we're going to address this issue, we've got to take the same approach to all social media platforms. We can't just single out one. Now, I join many of my colleagues and the ACLU in voicing concern over the freedom of expression. Now, I'm a strong supporter of ensuring that TikTok remains an open marketplace, and there's no guarantee in this bill that there won't be an interruption of service that could lead to an end of this app. I don't think we fully appreciate the impact this is going to have, and for that, I'm a strong no. Thank you, and I yield back. So, wow. I got to admit, the last guy made more sense to me. You know, you know, our data is already being sold to everyone all the time. So it's kind of crazy to me that they would be that concerned about our data going somewhere. Why would you be so concerned about individual Americans, what happens to their data? You haven't stopped it from being sold from Facebook or Twitter, from all these other entities. So it seems a little bit like suspect that now, oh my God, we got to be so superly concerned about data. You know, they're buying and selling American data across the country. Uh, and who knows who else is going to? And there's actually been no studies that verify or prove that ByteDance is even giving the information back to China. We don't even know that. So it would be nice if you had that information. Maybe that would impact the way I look at it. But until then, I might looking at it like, you know, calm down. You know, seems like it's a whole lot to do about nothing. And it seems like paranoia on behalf of the American people or the American government. I think we should go the same way that other countries have gone. Countries like Netherlands, the UK, Belgium, they decided that, hey, we're not going to put this application on our government devices. No on government devices. In fact, when I worked as a government contractor years ago, we had to make the decision with the iPad, and we decided that we were not going to put um, certain apps on the iPad on government issued uh, or, or the iPhone. That's what it was. It was the iPhone. So that was all it was. So, I mean, that's kind of a standard thing you could do and you would think, okay, this is government information, access to government servers. We don't want that to be compromised. I get that 
That makes more sense to me. But an individual, a 12-year-old in Nebraska, you're worried that someone's going to know what kind of recipes they prefer? Now, when we get into the disinformation portion of it, that's when I got concerns. You know, that's the, really the over-the-top thing because it's like these Americans or these government officials are pretending to be concerned about young people's in the way that they look at politics. You know, young people tend to look at politics a little bit different than the old heads. Old heads, for instance, sort of accept that America's always at war. But our young people are kind of like, why we got to be at war so much? That's not because of misinformation or that's being spread on an app like TikTok. That's because there's a generational divide in the way that we look at politics. And it's sort of like it seems that we are contributing everything that anybody has, any opposing view to them being misinformed. When really it's just that some of the shit that we do in America is so horrible that Anybody who's not accustomed to it would have a gag reflex trying to swallow it. Whether it be the way that we hold our elections, the electoral college itself, the entire setup of our political system, our money in politics, our war efforts, our military industrial complex, our prison industrial complex. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And a lot of these tricky-ass politicians try to attribute that to something to do with Russia or something to do with China, when it has something to do with our conscience as human beings and not being on the payroll of the paymasters of the elite classes that make money off of all of the aforementioned. So that's the way I see it. You know, you're not going to be able to ban that away. That thought process that makes us worry of our government, untrusting of our government based on what our government has done historically, that ain't going away. And that's got nothing to do with China. That's got to do with people aren't as stupid as you think they are. You're not going to be able to lock away all the information to keep everybody super dumb. You've been doing a really good job at it, but now this is, this is the information age for a reason. It's because people get information. And if it won't be TikTok, so this is the thing. If you ban TikTok, what'll be next? It'll be something else next because you aren't going to be able to control the masses with your bullshit anymore. Of course, some people are always going to be controlled because some people are afraid of information. But those that are willing to seek out information, to become informed, to become educated, you will never be able to ban that away. Instead of coming up with better arguments, for your points of view, instead of trying to sell your ideas to the American people, all you want to do is lock down the American people and force them to accept it. And then shame them or jail them for some bullshit in order to stop them from opposing your will. And that's what I keep seeing happening. And that's been, I think, at the root of this whole thing about banning TikTok. They want to use the, the mechanism to scare us. Oh, it's communist China. But really what it is, you're afraid of independence. You're afraid of your young people waking the fuck up. You're afraid of us banding together through information. It's the same reason why you want to ban history, ban the teachings of history, discussions about controversial issues like racism and slavery and the Holocaust or trans or whatever because you want to control the narrative. And some of us are not as dumb as you make out to be or you make us out to be. We figured it out. We know what's going on. And I'm going to be able to say it. If it's not on YouTube, it'll be on Twitter. If it's not on Twitter, it's on Facebook. If it's not on Facebook, it'll be Instagram. If it's not Instagram, it'll be TikTok or it'll be some other app that we come up with and it, and that we don't even know of that doesn't even exist yet because the people united will never be defeated. The people united will never be defeated. Now put that in your cap and smoke it. You're not going to be able to fool all of the people all of the time. Those days are over.